just quick review of what we just went over, okay? I'm inside control, I have the underhook, I'm gonna switch to the doorstop position, whether or not he does frame, if he frames, I always switch, okay? I always switch, but, or if he underhooks, I always switch, I always switch, okay? But even if I have the underhook and his arm is here, I can still switch, lift, and then I plant this hand right here on his chest, okay? My elbow point right here is based, Right hand switches the doorstop, blocks the hip. Everything's snug. If he tries to move around, it's real hard to move. See how I just took up the gap? When he moved to his left, I just keep taking up the gap and he keeps running into my elbow right here that is based. He can't go anymore because of the arm control. If he stayed over where he was over here, I would start to move and make it tighter. See how I made that adjustment? With my elbow based right here and my hand like this, keeping it real tight, he can't free his arm. Slide my knees up, but now I'm gonna push off this side and turn him on his side, right? Cover his head. He's probably gonna go into defensive position here. My hand's already threaded in. My right hand goes to the grip, five fingers. Don't grab with your thumb. Key lock five fingers on your own wrist. I'm gonna put my knee over his biceps. Try to do our basic push-pull. Remember, depending on how he grabs, it can be really tough, depending on how big he is, but I would try to push, pull, push, pull, fast, it looks like this. And I rip it and then I put it behind his back. You could bring it up at a 90 degree angle and rotate like this. That's the most anatomically efficient, right there. Um, but I prefer to put it behind the back, especially with the big boys. And then come on around over here so you can see the view. Then I can bring it up his back like so. Either do it with arm strength. If I have more trouble, I'll rotate and I'll push it. I might even drop my hip if I need maximum so I can be in this position, pulling back and driving if you need it. Okay, so this is what we worked on. Now, if he holds his hands and you have a big guy and you can't separate the grip, we put our back knee up real tight to his body. I don't like to step this foot over like this. I like to keep it here, close my knee, pivot turn, keep the more grip. I never change to a double hug. The double hug would be to go like this, don't do this. When you double hug, you leave so many opportunities to escape. He's good, he'll hitchhike and he'll walk around, especially with your leg here. Always keep your Kimura grip, five fingers, so everything's tight. Even when my knees are open, if he flops around and tries to jump, flip, whatever, there's nothing he can really do. I'm keeping the control with the Kimura. I transfer the leg, okay? Once I'm here, I can kick biceps. But in the real world, this is how I always learned in the beginning was kicking biceps. People don't hold like that. They hold like this. They might even do like a rear naked choke grip. Okay, everything, yeah, even like that. They might do that. It's kind of hard to like get in there sometimes. I like to go on top. When I go on top, I apply force and then I pull and I break. Even though my legs are floating up here, he tries to push them around. My Kimura grip keeps the control. I can bring my legs back down and then control, squeeze my knees and then finish that baby. Okay, so when he locks his hands, just go palm to palm or something. Palm to palm, yeah, something like this. See, you just go right on top and then cross right here, keeping the pressure and break the grip. This is my kind of the flavor that I've been showing a lot. We really like this move. Even if he pushes my legs around, I keep my control. Even if my legs tries to sit up right now, I still have the control. Kamara grip, I can go under the neck right here, cross back over. I've still got a great arm bar. Okay, so that's where we are. Now we're gonna give another simple, real simple finish, okay? Which is really popular nowadays. Um, it's fine, I'll do it right here. I have the underhook. I switch to doorstop. I bring the arm on the far side. I switch my hand to the doorstop. I angle towards the head. Toes are dug in the mat ready for an explosive bump. Okay, so if he does bump, I have control. Okay, don't be up here like this, right here where a guy can bump you around and be explosive. Okay, be ready. Spread out your base a little bit. Your doorstop hand is controlling and you're dropping tight, you got good pressure. Okay, now, as I motion around the head, sorry about that, bring him on his side, I slap that Kimura, I put the knee right there over his biceps. But here's what I'm really gonna do, okay? When I put this here, he thinks I'm trying to separate for the Kimura, which I am. Hey boys, shh. I'm trying to separate for the Kimura, right here. He's real strong, instead of transitioning into the arm bar, what I'm really doing with this knee is I'm bringing it this way over his biceps and then I'm pushing the inside of my knee against his chest. So instead of pushing down on his biceps, I'm 
pushing it into his chest. And then now, I'm just gonna drop my right leg out, fall on my side, my right leg becomes the pillow for his head, okay? My left leg is the choke leg. So my choke leg gets controlled and confirmed by going underneath the bottom leg. So the, this is the way I lock, and then we get a nice scissor choke, okay? Straighten out the legs. So it's not, it's not a pull like a triangle like this. You're not trying to pull your heels to your butt. You're trying to squeeze and straighten. Your lock should not be here behind your calf. Your lock should be at the ankles, down low, okay? Now, a lot of people do this move and you make a mistake. The person is aware, they tuck their chin. And then what ends up happening is, you might even try it from here. Look where my knees are right now, okay? He tucks his chin and then when I drop into it, I'm on his jaw. So you squeeze, squeeze, squeeze and waste a bunch of energy doing nothing, just pissing your partner off. Okay, and then they're gonna get out, okay, and then they're gonna kick your ass. So, you wanna make sure that you get under his neck. So even if he tucks his chin, part, here's how you set it up, okay? I don't even show him what I'm doing. I threaten by going here, but what is this? This could be separating the grip, but really what I'm doing is, when his chin's tucked, I'm putting my knee here, and then it's gonna kick his chin up, my knee will. Hmm. Okay, so watch, he tucks his chin, you should try this with your partner, have them tuck their chin, put my knee here, I threaten this, which helps take his mind off of what I'm doing, and then in the back side, if you come around here to the back side, watch what my knee does. Right now my knee's kind of at his back, right here. It's gonna kind of go like this, I'm gonna release the command, it's gonna go to the back of his neck. Don't lay down where he lays on your back, otherwise it'll look like this, and it'll be back. You see that? I'm, he can feel it, my knee is under his back. When I do the choke, it's not right. He has time to tuck his chin and I can't get him. I want my leg to be right there like a pillow. So this one's up here, this one's a pillow. And then this, even though he tucks his chin, comes down and goes on the bottom. And you get the neck. That way we get the choke, okay? So I'm trying to get the car off, I try to get it, he's too strong. I put him in here, really it's kind of like I'm faking him out, but this is for real. I mean, I'm gonna come more him if, he, if I can break it. But really, I'm setting him up, I push it into his chest so it's tight, I drop my right leg back, and it goes right there. And remember, don't lock this way. Look at my ankles. This is the choking leg, the one that chokes his neck. If it goes on top, it's not being controlled. You want it on the bottom, so that your right leg is making it strong, so that when you squeeze, you'll get a maximum squeeze. So, I'm sitting right here. This is the choke leg. If this is the leg choking his neck, the other one goes on top. If this is the leg choking his neck, the other one goes on top. So if I have the Kimura right here, this is the choke leg, the top leg, the other one goes on top. If I'm on this side, choke leg, the other one goes on top. So I look at it from my point of view, my right leg goes on top of my left. This is the choke leg, here, not like this. Okay, you're gonna get a lot more out of your squeeze. Okay, last time, so here it is. Okay, I just passed this guard in the gate. Had an underhook, I passed the guard right here. I'm gonna switch and go to the door stop. I angle a little bit. Look at my right hand, it's already tucked real tight to his pec muscle right here. Got a good grip on his rib cage or his pec. He can't get his arm out. He's trying to roll back towards his back. Maybe over to there, I'm gonna walk around, punch him on his side, bring my knee over his biceps, check it, doesn't work. We already know we can arm bar. We've done that, look where my right knee is. It's nice and tight into there. He could be tucking his chin. I bring my right leg back and it slides right in front of the neck and then bam, get that choke. Very effective, okay? Very effective to get that choke. It doesn't matter. That's another beautiful thing about chokes. You know, some people are really tough with their arms, ankles. There's all kinds of discussions over. You see matches with foot locks and toe holds. People pop their ankles, rip, 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 pop, 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 pop. And then guys still keep fighting. If you choke their neck and they just don't give up, they pass out. It's a beautiful thing. So, especially in the street, right? You rip some dude's ankle up, yeah, he might be hurt. But if you choke him out, he's not fighting at all. Mm. Okay, so it's it's kind of a nice thing. Just don't kill anybody, please. <laughs> all right, teach me grappling. Thank you guys so much.